behind on earth to suffer for a time, while the people who accepted Christ will be secretly taken to heaven. We have seen from the scriptures that Christ's return will be anything but secretive. But does the Bible back up this theory that the wicked will be left behind to earn their salvation? A prophecy in Jeremiah plainly describes the state of the earth just after the redeemed, along with Christ and the angels, have vacated it. I looked at the earth, and it was formless and empty, and at the heavens, and their light was gone. I looked at the mountains, and they were quaking. All the hills were swaying. I looked, and there were no people. Every bird in the sky had flown away. I looked, and the fruitful land was a desert. All its towns lay in ruin before the Lord, before His fierce anger. Just after the appearing of Christ, the wicked will be destroyed, and the faithful in Christ ascend to meet Him in the sky to be taken to heaven. Then for one thousand years, the earth will be in a state of ruin, uninhabited, and desolate. If you are not ready when Jesus comes, there will be no second chance. Now is the time to prepare. This world as we know it is about to end, and a new chapter soon to begin. God has generously made a way for every person to be a part of the new earth that is soon to come. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Since the fall of man in Eden, God has promised to one day make all things new. The Bible is filled with wonderful promises from a loving God to His creation. God did not create this world with all of its beauty and splendor in vain. He created it to last forever. And His plan has never changed. The first two chapters of Genesis outline the creation of this planet and the fall of humanity. The last two chapters of Revelation outline how God will put an end to evil and recreate the earth to its former state of perfection. And after the millennium of peace in heaven, it reveals that we will return to our earthly home to live forever with our Creator. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men, and He will live with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. The difficult order of things as we know them now will soon pass away and a state of complete perfection will replace it. Never again will the sensation of pain be experienced by a human being. And according to this scripture, God will move His throne right here to this earth and dwell with us forever. This is the wonderful hope that is offered to all people. It is a promise directly from God Himself. Furthermore, Jesus promises, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. In this massive city, described by the Bible to be 1,400 square miles in size, there is more than enough room for every person who has ever lived on this earth. This is just a small idea of the amazing inheritance God is preparing. Truth is, these images do not come close to portraying what it will actually be like. Even so, it is thrilling to imagine the possibilities.
He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. For thousands of years, human beings have dreamed of creating a perfect utopian civilization and have searched the earth for the legendary fountain of youth. The very things that humanity has searched for from the dawn of time have been here all along in God's message to mankind. God knows the needs and desires of His creation. Just as we long to live in abundance as we were created to, God longs to give us the desires of our hearts. Unfortunately, some misrepresentations say that God is cruel and vindictive, eager to punish human beings for their sins. Yet, the Bible reveals that God's generosity and affection are endless and that He has gone to great lengths to love and save humanity. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. What a generous God to leave the comforts of heaven, clothe Himself in human flesh, and come to this earth with a selfish mission.